So as I promised in my last video, today I'd like to talk about how to configure VLANs on the Grandstream 7800 series switches. Now I'll be using model 7801P in this video. And while this is not intended to be a deep dive on VLANs, the primary focus is to show you how to configure those switch ports on the 7801P. I will be touching on the basics to get started. So touching on the basics, let's take a look at the diagram I put together, focusing only on the top part to start. This is an example of what is known as a flat network, meaning all of the devices connected to the network will receive an IP address in the same domain or network, usually referred to as VLAN 1 or the native VLAN. I've seen a lot of home networks set up this way, and while it's not a bad thing for smaller networks, it can become problematic on larger networks with more than one switch and many devices. For example, if one of the hosts or computers sends out a broadcast message, this message will go to all of the switches and all of the devices, creating a lot of unnecessary network traffic. Not a very efficient design. This is where VLANs come into play. Let's now take a look at the bottom half of the diagram. VLANs, very simply put, allow you to segment or break up the network into smaller groups of devices, with each group having its own VLAN ID, DHCP server, and network range as shown here. How it's divided up is left up to you or the network administrator. Businesses and schools, for example, may divide up a network based on functionality. For example, a business may separate sales teams, support teams, voice, and so forth. Schools may use the VLANs to separate administration, building principals, superintendents from faculty, and then go a step further and separate student traffic from faculty traffic. A more common setup for a home network is what I am showing here. You see three networks, the primary network indicated in green with the VLAN ID of 1, a guest network in blue with the VLAN ID of 20, and an IoT network in red with the VLAN ID of 30. Using VLANs to break up the network into smaller sections reduces traffic and makes the network more secure. If a device, for example, in the primary network sends out a broadcast message, instead of it going to all of the devices, as in the flat network example up above, the traffic will stay within its own group or VLAN. As a side note, the inter-VLAN routing and firewall rules are all done at the router level which we'll get into more in the upcoming home network series. Some terminology you need to be familiar with, tagged, untagged, and hybrid. A tagged port, also known as a trunk port, passes multiple VLAN traffic. Usually, the native VLAN is the untagged traffic, while other VLANs are considered tagged traffic. An untagged switch port, also known as an access port, will only pass traffic for one VLAN. And a switch port that's designated as hybrid will pass multiple VLAN traffic as untagged. Hopefully in the next part of the video, this will make a little bit more sense to you as I show you how I configure the actual switch ports. All right, I'm signed into the GWN 7801P. Let's get started with the port configuration. Let's come over to the left menu. We're gonna click on switching and we're gonna come down to VLAN. You can see we have the default VLAN in the list. If we click on the edit pencil and take a look behind the scenes, we can see that all of the ports on the switch are currently set as untagged, meaning that if you plugged a computer into any one of those ports, it would get an address in the native or default VLAN of, in this case, 192.168.80.0/24. However, we need to go ahead and add VLAN 20 and VLAN 30 to the switch. I've already got that set up on the Grandstream router, and the point for this video is to make the switch aware of the VLANs that are set up on the router. So we're going to go ahead and click the blue add button and we're gonna come down and we're gonna add VLAN ID 20 and say okay. And we'll go ahead and add VLAN ID 30 as well. Okay, so now that we have the VLANs added to the list, it's time to configure the ports. 
So referring back to the diagram, we're going to take port 5 and associate it with VLAN 20. And then we're also going to take ports 7 and 8 and associate those ports with VLAN 30. So let's start with port 5. Let's come over to VLAN 20. Click on the edit pencil. And let's come over to port number 5. We're going to select it and click it a second time. And you can see now we have a U there that's untagged traffic. What we do want to do, though, is I'm going to take port number 2, which is the port that the switch is connected to the router. We're going to take that and make that a tagged port so that that'll become our trunk port. So we have number 2 as our trunk and then number 5 as our untagged port. Let's go ahead and say OK. And let's click Save. But we're not done yet. We have to come over now to the port settings and change the link type. So here you can see port number five. It's set to VLAN 20. However, the link type is that of a trunk port. We need to change that to an access port. So we're going to make this an access port. And we're going to leave it as VLAN 20. So now we have configured VLAN 20. So now we're going to do the same thing. For VLAN 30, we're going to go in, edit, and we're going to take port 7 and make it untagged, port 8 and make it untagged. And don't forget, we also have to tag because we want port 2 to pass traffic for VLAN 30, so we have to make that part of the trunk. So now that we have our setup here, let's go ahead and click OK and save. And don't forget, we got to come up to port settings now, and we're going to take ports 7 and 8 and we have to change them from trunk to access. So if you look here, you can see the link type says trunk, except all frame types. But as soon as I change it to access, you can see it becomes untagged only. So we're going to leave it as untagged for VLAN 30 and say OK. OK, so we have ports 7 and 8 now configured as access ports for VLAN 30. So let's go ahead and click Save. And now if we plug a computer into port 5, we should get an address in the guest network. And if we plug the computer into port 7 or 8, we should get an address in the IoT network. Let's give that a shot. All right, I have my Windows laptop plugged into port number 5. I do apologize for the fan noise. The fan is kicking up on the laptop right now. But you can see here it's plugged into port number 5 on the switch. And then port number two is my trunk port over to the router. So let's go ahead and let's see if we get an IP address in the guest network. Okay, and I don't know if you can see this right here. I'll try to enlarge it for you. But we have an address in the 192.168.20 subnet. So that is correct. That did work. Now, if you pay attention to the screen, I will switch the laptop into port 7. Okay, you can see now that we have a link on port 7. So, let's do the same thing. Let's do an IP config and see what we get. We should get an address in the 192.168.30 subnet. And again, I'll enlarge this, but you can see right here, we have an address in the 192.168.30 subnet. So that's working. And again, let's go ahead and just to show you port 8. If you watch the screen, you should see the link come alive. There we go. So now we have a link in port 8. Let's cut back to the laptop and let's do another IP config. And again, you can see here we have an address in the 192.168.30 subnet. All right, so for a little bonus here for sticking in this long into the video, what you're seeing is a Grandstream IP phone and it's pulling an address on VLAN 30. I have the phone plugged into 
port six on the actual switch. Now plugged into the back of the phone using the phone's secondary network port is my Windows laptop. And if I do an IP config, you'll see here that it's pulling an address in the native VLAN. So this comes in handy when there's only like say a single network drop in an area where you have two devices to plug in. So let me show you how I accomplish this. I just want to say that part of the configuration is on the phone itself where you have to set the VLAN tag in the phone's configuration. So I've already done that. Let's go over to the computer now and I'll show you how I configured it on the switch. So let's go back into the edit mode of VLAN 30. Let's click on the little pencil and you'll see here port number six, I set it as a tagged port. And then under port settings, I left port six as a trunk. So it's passing all frame types. So if we go back to the default VLAN, so the computer is getting the native VLAN address from the secondary phone port. It's being passed through to the computer as untagged. However, because the phone's configuration includes the VLAN tag, I tagged port six so that port six also carries the VLAN 30 traffic. So this enables the phone to pull an address in VLAN 30 while the pass-through port on the phone is allowing the computer to pull an address in the native VLAN. So if you enjoyed this short overview of VLANs and how to configure the actual switch ports on the GWN7800 series switches, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I list here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you as I do in every video for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.